oh gosh, I finally come to church and they asked me to come up here. <laughs> um, as a congregation, we, we would like to um, present a, a humble gift to you for, for celebrating your birthday in great gratitude for, for everything you've, you've provide for us here as your congregation. Happy birthday. <laughs> I don't know. I guess you could. Do I have to open it you now, Pat? Okay, I'm going to open it. It's heavy. It's heavy. Whoop. It's a new car. I have a car. Yellow. I love yellow. Did you know that I love yellow? <laughs> we, we had um, Jan come up because we just wanted everyone to know that she was here. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, a blessing. You are a blessing to so many people. Oh, that's beautiful. And there's stuff inside, but it's not coffee inside. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Hmm. I, uh, my birthday is August 1st, and I celebrate all month. So I'm so glad that you're, you're um, here at this part of the month. And I used to love, as a child in school, having a birthday in the summer, because then I could have presents in the summer and then presents at Christmas. <laughs> but thank you. Let's see. Good morning. Our first announcement is concerning the sight and sound trip. I need to have the reservations in by September 17th. Because if we don't fill the bus, I need to let the company that takes us know so they can fill the bus with people from other places. So if you're going to go on the trip, please make sure you sign up by September 17th. Main Street Pantry. We were fortunate enough when we got our delivery this week to get pasta sauce. What good is it without pasta? <laughs> so we're asking if you have a chance, if you see a sale, we could use some pasta for our pantry. Let's see, number three. Oh, thanks to everybody who brought items for the Vacation Bible School. On the last day, they, had, they brought two dogs in from the Humane Society, and the kids loved it. And there was a lot of items collected, and they were very appreciative. So thank you to the people who brought in for that, and also the items for the Vacation Bible School. Uh, next week. After church, the Staff Parish Relations Committee will meet in the side room right after church. And I think that's it for announcements. Would the ushers please come forward to take up the offering? In gratitude for all that we have received from you, O Lord, we offer our tithes and gifts for the ministry of this church in this world which hungers and thirsts for love and peace.
Please join me in the offering prayer. With great joy, we present these tithes and gifts for the ministry of this church. Be with each of us as we, too, commit ourselves to lives of joyful, thankful service. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. It appears that during my time away, there weren't too many uh, prayer requests needed, so that's, a, that's good news. But we do have some to pray for today. To pray for those who have cancer, who are going through treatment, which is a challenging time. We pray for Robin Adams and Pete Kachanik and for Carol Mannion. For healing, we pray for Rosemary Esposito, for Daniel Novak's grandfather, for Luz and Robert Young, for Ashley and Kirk, for Ed, John, Barbara, and Joan. And for praise reports, we've been praying for Shirley Brown. Shirley Brown. A uh, friend of Beverly Dinger's, and uh, her test came out that she no longer has cancer. So, woo! So, God is good. <laughs> and let us now go to God in our time of prayer. Gracious and compassionate God, we lift up to you all of those who I have mentioned and any others that we silently pray in our hearts at this time. Hear this silent prayer. <clears throat> God, we mourn with those who have lost loved ones. And we especially mourn with the state of Hawaii for, for those who have been devastated by the fire and just lost everything we can't even imagine. So we lift those uh, people up to you, O oh God. We ask for healing of those who are physically ill and healing of those with mental disease. Please bring help to all who have been impacted by natural disasters across our country and across the globe. Wrap your arms of compassion around those who are affected by evil and injustice. So most compassionate God, open our eyes so that we might see those around us that need you the most. Open our ears so that we could hear the cry of the needy. And open our heart to anyone who is our neighbor, that we may be friends to all. Remind us that there are so many people around us right now who need compassion and love. We pray all this in Jesus' name who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, if you are able, please stand for the reading of the gospel lesson.
Okay, today's gospel lesson comes from Matthew 14, uh, verses uh, 13 to 21. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him out from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the, excuse me, and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces 12 baskets full, and those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. I also would like to say uh, it is so great to have Beverly McFarlane back from all her... <clears throat> All our health issues are almost done, yes. almost, but we'll keep, keep praying. All right. In reading uh, and researching for this passage on homiletics.com, which is a subscription, uh, it's a magazine, uh, they had this story, and so I'm going to share this story. In the early 1980s, a fast food Chinese restaurant opened in California at the Glendale Galleria Mall. Lots of California malls are called something Galleria. Anyway, the owners called it Panda Express. A few years later, the chef, Andy Kao, developed their signature dish, orange chicken. Today, they have more than 2,000 restaurants in nine different countries. Surprisingly, the top dish is teriyaki chicken, which isn't even Chinese. A top food critic considers the best things on the menu to be teriyaki chicken, Beijing beef, Kyung Pao chicken, and the orange chicken came in fourth. Now, nearly 40 years after its founding, Panda Express continues to evolve, continues to grow with what's happening in the culture and they recently introduced a plant-based version of their signature dish, orange chicken without the chicken. <laughs> so Panda Express 2 is, is uh, growing in their philanthropic work. Uh, since 2021, they've raised $2.3 million and donated it to organizations that support people of color and other marginalized communities. One of their CEOs, or chief brand officer, is that CBO? I don't know, said, we are a company founded by immigrants. We continue to look outward. We're trying to answer the question, how do we best serve our people and the broader community. How do we best serve our people and the broader community? They wanted to serve 
orange chicken, which they did, but teriyaki chicken was the most popular, and so they kept serving that. They paid attention to the trends, and now they have that orange chicken without the chicken. And they have looked outward and contributed to the needs of their community. The feeding of the 5,000 story appears in all four of the Gospels. In this passage from Matthew, Jesus has gone away from the crowd to be alone after hearing of the death of John the Baptist, or I could say the murder of John the Baptist. The followers of Jesus wanted to go with him, perhaps to receive comfort from him because of their loss as well. Jesus isn't annoyed by them. He cares deeply for them, and he invites them to come along with him. If I was going to take a nap somewhere off to the side and people wanted to follow me there, I would be annoyed, but not Jesus. Jesus, uh, I'm not Jesus, so that's good. But in, um, <clears throat> we've heard this story probably many times. You probably heard it from all the different gospels, the feeding of the 5,000. And in each gospel, it serves a purpose. Matthew is the first gospel in the New Testament. And the Matthew gospel connects the Old Testament with the New Testament. It wasn't the first book to be written, and that's why it's first in the New Testament. It wasn't even the first gospel that was written, but it connects the old with the new, it, because it begins with all the lineage of Jesus, she begot, 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 that whole story. Um, it brings the people from the Old Testament along into um, where Jesus was then. So it... Uh, ties the old with the new. It, it reminds us, this story, of, the, of God's feeding manna to the ancient Hebrews who were in exile. And it also points forward to the Lord's Supper. With only five loaves and two fish, Jesus introduced a new version of a signature dish to the Jesus Express menu. He multiplied the loaves and fishes and all ate and were filled. So listen to this, I think it's verse 16. Listen to this verse and see if it reminds you of anything. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples then gave them to the crowds, foretelling the last meal that Jesus would have with his disciples. When we celebrate communion, we also are given the gift of compassion and love from God through Jesus, and we feel it at every communion meal that we celebrate. The feeding of the 5,000 reminds us that the Lord does provide. Maybe not millions of dollars to children who are in need around the globe, but physical and spiritual nourishment comes from God to us through Jesus. We find, when we find ourselves in a lonely and deserted place, Jesus meets us and has compassion for us. When we feel spiritually empty, Christ breaks his bread and feeds us and nourishes our spirit. And when we're worn out at the end of a long day, Jesus doesn't send us away to fend for ourselves. He invites us to lie down in green pastures, and he gives us what we need for our life. 
Jesus encourages us as well to extend his compassion and his nourishment to others. He wants us to continue to look outward and to answer the Panda Express question, how do we best serve our people and the broader community? At first, the disciples were resistant to Jesus' idea to feed all these people. People, They just want to send them to their own towns to get their own food somewhere else. But Jesus says, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. The disciples are confused, of course, because they have five loaves and two fish. But after Jesus blesses the bread, there is enough for everyone. Did you notice, though, that Jesus doesn't feed everyone? He feeds the disciples, and then they feed the rest. Just like we are fed through our faith in Jesus Christ so that we may feed others. So that's the challenge of the Jesus Express, to take what Jesus gives us and then share it with others. You give them something to eat, Jesus says. And then he gives us what all that we need to feed the world around us. And we know that we are committed to Bring all to Christ by feeding his sheep. And we know the need is great. According to the United States Department of Agriculture, in 2021, about 10% of U.S. households were food insecure. Like one in 10 homes could not afford to get the food they need or weren't able to find the food they need. And that's why we are here. We were here before 2021 with the Main Street Food Pantry. We responded to the need of the community by giving of ourselves. We give uh, volunteer hours, we give food, we give uh, light to those who are in darkness. We opened a food pantry, we contribute to a food pantry, we cook meals for the community, like when we have Feed My Sheep, and we rescue food that might otherwise be thrown away. You might not, you all might not know this, but we take food uh, from Acme. We have dedicated people who go pick up the food on Saturdays from Acme, otherwise that food would have been thrown out. We also take food from Wawa, like breakfast sandwiches that weren't sold, and we then can freeze them and give them to the pantry clients. So we're doing a service for the companies and for our environment. So thanks to the, vo the hard work of many volunteers, I think it's above about 30 volunteers, we've been doing this for close to 20 years, I think. Yeah, <clears throat> but what about the rest of the needs of the people around them? Jesus would say, you give them something to eat. You feed them what they need. You feed their bodies, which we do, and their minds and their spirit. So that can go behind just filling their stomachs. We can give in many ways. Giving can include um, other things to put in the grocery bags. We were talking about this at a small meeting a couple weeks ago that maybe we could put, uh, collect little bottles, bottles of bubbles and put them in the grocery bags so that when the people get their food out, they can use the bubbles to bring some joy into their life. I love bubbles. Or we can put some prayer, some uh, crayons and paper in the bag. Even adults like to color, right? I color. And 
even a grocery gift card. So uh, there are other things we can do besides just giving them food. Our giving can include regular tithes and offerings to this church, which helps support the missions and ministries of this church. Giving involves welcoming visitors to worship and sharing communion with them. I know some people are very uh, appreciative that I say you don't have to be a member of this church or any church to come and feast at the Lord's table. We welcome people. And giving can extend to creative work for other things like affordable housing or helping the opioid crisis or all, all different things that are happening in the world. I'm not the only creative one in this space. You guys are creative, and if you have thoughts of uh, needs of, of the community and have a creative way that we may be able to feed that need, let me know. <coughs> Remember that Jesus was famous for eating with people he did not know and eating with people that others didn't want to eat with. Jesus was criticized for eating with um, the tax collectors and sinners. He didn't consider people to be strangers at all when it came to sharing food and fellowship. When he reached out to people around him, he always, always showed generosity and compassion. Since Jesus has given us what we need for a good life, he wants us to share that goodness with others, not just in the pantry, but all around this community. So does that mean our body, mind, and spirit will de be depleted because we do all this sharing? Of course not. When everyone in the crowd of 5,000 and men, women and children um, eat, they collect 12 baskets of leftovers from the five loaves. So we will not be depleted if we go with the right attitude. If we say, oh, I got to work at the food pantry because my mom's making me do this service time. Well, that person is going to get depleted because they are not going with the right attitude. They're not going to give of themselves, to give the God part of themselves to others. When we visit the Jesus Express, we discover that Jesus meets us in our deserted places with compassion. Like a good shepherd, he gives us what we need for life and invites us to rest in the green pastures. And because he wants us to be his disciples, he asks us to feed others with the resources that we have. What are some new and creative ways we can join Jesus in compassion and in innovation, looking outward, caring for the community? Well, at the Jesus Express, what's on the menu? Compassion, love, caring, and nourishment. At Jesus Express, the menu is expanding all the time to meet the needs of God's people. But the staples are always the same. Compassion, love, caring, and nourishment. But... Jesus said, you give them something to eat. So you can think of a new menu item for the Jesus Express. How do we best serve our people and the broader community? Amen. So I invite you to rise as we join in our closing hymn, Freely, Freely.
you have received. And Jesus said, you give them something to eat. So go to freely, freely give of God's love and compassion given to you. Go in the peace of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stay for refreshments. We have some goodies, I guess. <laughs>